Hi everyone, I'm Professor Yu, and this is the first in a series of video lectures for the online version of Matt C58, an introduction to mathematical biology at the University of Toronto at Scarborough. This is a third year class, and I will be assuming an undergraduate background in differential equations and linear algebra. Now, before we get started with the material proper, let's discuss exactly what I mean when I use the term mathematical biology. Now, a naive answer might be that, well, it's just an application of math to biology. And while that's true, that's not actually a very informative answer uh, to biology. It's not a very informative answer because mathematical biology is often mediated through other fields. It defies easy classification. For example, um, there are obvious examples where we apply physics to biology, and uh, you might that be mathematical biology? For example, if you, uh, the fluid dynamics of blood, uh, fluid dynamics of blood. So that's clearly an example where you're using your, our knowledge of physics to model a biological system. But now, when we're doing that, we still are using math, and so is that mathematical biology? Some people would argue yes, some people would argue no, it depends on who you're asking. Or there's the entire field of computational biology, uh, computational biology and data analysis. These have been applied to analyzing, for example, the evolution of epidemics. Um, there's also plenty of mathematics under the hood, but here it's just mediated through computer science. And to give a final example before, uh, not to belabor the point too much, we also often use biochemistry uh, in modeling biological systems. So for example, the reaction kinetics of molecules within cells. Uh, of molecules and cells, that's something that we can model, uh, uh, but that we are going through this intermediary of using chemistry. So the definition of biology is extremely broad, and we obviously can't cover all of it in one course. Um, however, what we're going to do in this course is we're going to focus on a particular style of mathematical biology. It's going to be uh, on how we design models of biological systems using, in particular, difference equations and differential equations. So let's write that all down. Mathematical modeling of biological systems. And this is a multi-step process. So first, you might want to formulate a model of a biological system. Formulate a model. It's important to remember that the model isn't the system itself. Uh, so all models are wrong, some of them are useful. Once we've formulated the mathematical model, though, we can apply mathematical techniques. So we can apply mathematical techniques to understanding the behavior of the model, uh, to understanding model behavior. Model behavior. Okay, and then once we've done that, well, now we understand how the model behaves, the hope is that we can interpret the, the behavior of a model to get biological results. So the last step is interpretation, where we're taking things back to the biology. Interpretation of model to get biological results. Okay, so now when we're formulating models, there are a number of different design choices we get to make. So um, one simple, super stupid model would be to just model and just look at the system and say, well, our motto is that everything remains constant forever. This is a model. It's not a very useful model, but it is a model and it can make predictions. Um, but unfortunately, when you interpret that model's behavior, it turns out not to match the model, uh, not to match the biological system itself. So instead, we often want models that are dynamical and that change with time, for example. So maybe how many crickets are uh, present this year versus next year versus the year after. And so one of the first choices you get to make is, well, if you're going to be modeling uh, evolution with time, how is time measured? So is it discrete or continuous? And let's give some examples of that. So discrete time versus continuous time. So uh, some of you might have uh, been seeing 
the periodical cicadas that appear. So there are these locust-looking creatures that uh, every 13 or 17 years pop up out of the ground, they, uh, swarm, they swarm the entire area, mate, and then their larvae go to, uh, drop into the ground and then bury themselves for 13 or 17 years before they come out the next time. So the nice thing about a system like that, uh, periodical cicadas, let me write that down, uh, periodical cicadas, is that when they, they come out in these regular time intervals and then they stop. Uh, and so you can measure generation times by each of these uh, times when the cicadas come out. And so it's discrete. You don't have to worry about overlap between things because there is um, just a really big uh, hubbub. And if you've heard the cicadas, you'll know that it can get really quite loud. A really big hubbub all at once. And then that's the only interval you have to measure. On the other hand, other systems aren't so nice and discrete. For example, if you have bacterial growth, well, if you have bacterial, bacteria growing on the plate, the different bacterial cells don't talk to each other and say, oh, hey, um, I'm about to divide. Make sure you divide at exactly the same moment in time. Instead, the generations can get separated because the bacteria can uh, divide at, well, any time uh, along the entire continuous spectrum. So instead, we have bacteria, you can measure the chance that it's going to divide at any particular point, or the number, the total number of bacteria at any point in time, and that can differ continuously. Now, this distinction is, is when we're using uh, the difference between difference equations and differential equations. So here, for discrete time, we're going to use difference equations to model it. Difference equations. And for continuous time, well, we'll use the ever familiar differential equations that we studied in B44. Okay, where was I? Yeah. But, so, we have that. So, in this particular case, I chose examples where it sort of makes sense to use difference equations because cicadas do have these real discrete generation times, uh, whereas bacteria don't, and so maybe it makes more sense to use differential equations. But, you should still keep in mind that we're still making design choices to build a model. You can think about, you can use difference equations to model bacterial growth as well. Maybe you measure, maybe you only have a measurement once a day, and you're measuring the total number of bacteria there are uh, after one day versus after five days, and then you're discretizing time into these the defined intervals, these chunks. Uh, maybe that kind of model isn't quite as good, but maybe it's still useful, because as I mentioned earlier, it doesn't, the model is a choice we make as uh, mathematicians. It's not necessarily an inherent property of the system. On the other hand, if we choose to recapitulate more of the features of the inherent system, then maybe that makes our model more accurate or more useful. Okay, so that's the very, the first example. Of course, there are other uh, factors that may play a role. So here, I've just been talking about time now and how things change as they vary across time. Now, of course, there are other dimensions things could vary across, the most obvious one being space. So if you have something that varies across both time and space, uh, oh, let me use black for that one. Uh, actually, you can't see that, can you? Let me go up a bit. Time and space. All right, so now, in the simplest case of dependence only on a single variable of time, we can use what are called ordinary difference or ordinary differential equations. If we have dependence on space or some other variable in addition to time, then, well, we might want to consider how system dynamics changes with respect to any one of these factors. So, like, maybe you're going to fix the time and just uh, walk along uh, the coast and see how the water level changes across the coast. And so now this necessitates partial difference or partial differential equations. So this is a uh, different distinction between ODEs and PDEs. Uh, let me draw out some of this classification quickly. So we have up here, we have time dependence. If, it, uh, if our dynamical variables only have time dependence versus if they have time and space dependence. Uh, dependence. And here, we, if we everything is in discrete intervals, so like the generation times of cicadas, versus continuous intervals. Now, in this case, uh, for if we're using discrete intervals and we only have a time dependence, then all we need is ordinary difference equations.
And if we have continuous intervals, well, these are just ordinary differential equations like we studied in the, like you would have studied in previous courses. Differential equations. And if you have both time and space dependency, or more generically, if you have multiple variables that you care about um, the dynamics uh, that are changing, and you care about how the state variables change with respect to both time and space, then you might end up having to use partial difference equations. Or partial differential equations if you're working with continuous time. Differential equations. Now, you can also have things like discrete time and continuous space, or your, your variables don't have to all be alike in some sense, but we won't discuss that uh, for now. Now, in our class, most of our focus is going to be here, simply because this is uh, an introduction to mathematical biology, not an advanced course in mathematical biology. We'll mention some of the other types of models, but for the purposes of this course, we're going to be focusing primarily on ordinary difference and ordinary differential equations. In fact, the first half of the course will be on ordinary difference equations, and the second half will largely be focused on ordinary differential equations. Um, so having said that, let's go ahead and get started with the material in the uh, next lecture.